Hi everybody, it's Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love and this Facebook Live is dedicated to Cushing's. Cushing's is one of the most common endocrine diseases of dogs and it's near and dear to my heart because I had two dogs with Cushing's disease. And I remember when I was in vet school, it was such a, such a difficult concept for me to, to understand the disease of Cushing's and I remember learning about the different blood work that we had to do and, and it was so um, such a confusing one, but I started to learn more about it when my own dogs uh, had Cushing's. And so, um, so I, I am very fond of this disease, I guess you could say, because I had to learn so much about it when I was dealing with my own dogs. And so um, before I go into a lot of detail about Cushing's, I first need to talk about the adrenal gland because this is actually the, um, the, the source of the problem is the adrenal gland. So, what, so the adrenal gland is these two little glands and they're, they're um, right around the kidney area, so very small, and, but they are so important because they produce hormones for, um, for our daily living. And, and so some of the hormones that they produce are steroids and, a, and adrenaline. So have you ever heard somebody say when you're all scared or nervous, like, oh, my adrenal gland squeezed and they just produced more adrenaline. <laughs> and that's actually a true fact. Um, but those uh, hormones that are produced, they're, they're regulated by another organ or gland in our body called the pituitary gland, and that's in your head. Um, so the adrenal gland is, um, like I said, this tiny little gland, but it's got two layers in it. So it's sort of like, it's sort of like an avocado. So you've got the pit inside, which is the medulla, and that produces the adrenal uh, hormones. And then the cortex, so the outside of it, that's the ones that's uh, going to produce the, the cortisol or the, the stress hormones. And so um, we might have some diseases that affect either the medulla or the, or the cortex. So now the pituitary, that, that gland up in your, up in your head, is um, also a part of this, of this complex. And so uh, I just thought it was really important for you to understand first the medulla and then the, pitu the pituitary because with Cushing's, there are two different types of Cushing's. Either they're pituitary dependent or they're adrenal, uh, a tumor in the adrenal gland. So the pituitary dependent one, hi St. Pete, Florida. <laughs> the pituitary dependent Cushing's is more common. I would say maybe 80% of our dogs with Cushing's will have this type of, this type of um, Cushing's. So what happens is the pituitary typically should be sending messages to the adrenal gland to either produce more steroids or don't produce steroids. Like, hey, we've got enough in our system. And so if there is a um, tumor in the pituitary gland, you know, it could be benign, but it's just a, an overstimulation of that pituitary gland. It actually just keeps sending messages um, that get confused with the, with the adrenal gland that the adrenal gland just starts continuing to, to make more steroids when it really should stop. And so there's, a, there's some messaging problems going on. And so the, the pituitary gland itself is, is, is okay, but it just is getting the signals to keep producing more steroids. And so both of those adrenal glands are just going crazy and they're, and they're producing a lot of, of excess hormones. And so that pituitary dependent um, type of Cushing's, like I said, is the most common. The other type of Cushing's, which is the adrenal gland Cushing's, um, that is less common, so maybe 20% or less, are, uh, are this form of, of Cushing's. And so what happens is one of the two adrenal glands will get a tumor um, developed inside of it. And so that tumor will, will force that adrenal gland to produce more and more of steroids. And so um, I mentioned as I started that two of my dogs have had Cushing's. And so I've had one dog with either kind. The first was my Doberman Neo. So I know that many of you know I'm a Doberman fan and you might know my Doberman Duncan, but before Duncan was Neo. And um, so he was named after the Matrix, not after the singer. And so Neo is a red Doberman, just like Duncan. And um, he was the best dog. He did nothing wrong. He was, uh, I, I don't even remember him chewing a shoe by accident. But one day I came home and he was about nine and uh, somebody had peed in the house. And so I knew it wasn't the cats and I knew it wasn't my other dog because Neo just had that look like he did something wrong and he had never done anything wrong. He had no signs or symptoms of diseases. He peed in the house and that to me was a sign of something. And so as a veterinarian, I kind of listed the things I was worried about. I was worried about diabetes. I was worried about kidney failure and I was worried about Cushing's. So I immediately took him to my clinic because I was working in a general practice at that time and so I ran some blood work and I did some preliminary tests and I knew that, uh-oh, it's, it's pointing to him having, having Cushing's. 
And so then I did an ultrasound to look into his abdomen and I saw that there was one of his adrenal glands was massive and ugly and just, I, I knew that it was pituitary dependent. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, adrenal dependent. So with him, I had to make a choice. Duncan, I'm sorry, Neo was well. He, he didn't have any other symptoms, like I said. He just had some accidents in the house. And if I now think back, I, I noticed probably that he was drinking a lot more and peeing a lot more outside. And you know, we just kept him in, inside the house a little bit too long that day where he had an accident. So he was doing well physically. And so with that adrenal gland tumor, it's about a 50-50 chance that it's benign. Um, and so what do we do? And to me, that's, that's good odds. And so the treatment option, one of the treatment options for adrenal Cushing's is um, to, remove that, to remove that adrenal gland. And so I had to make that, I had to make that choice of, of having his adrenal gland removed or not. So I, I thought, you know what, he's doing really well. I like the chances of 50-50 that it being benign, let's go for it. So we drove Neo up to University of Florida where I have some great friends that are, um, that is a oncology, a, a surgeon dedicated to oncology and also some wonderful anesthesiologists. And I know Sheila's watching, so she was one of them. And I decided to have uh, the tumor removed. And so um, when they removed it, I was hoping to just look at a very large adrenal gland. But unfortunately what came out was a really, really nasty tumor. And, and I know that we might be posting the picture of that tumor. So for those of you that are a little bit queasy, you may not want to look, but it's just like this ugly, ugly looking tumor. Um, and, and ugly looking tumors to me just don't mean they're benign. And so unfortunately we did, um, we did send it off to pathology and it came back that it was, it was malignant. So it was a nasty tumor. And while they were inside, they did notice that cancer had spread a little bit to his liver. And so, um, so I was, I was hoping for the benign form and it was not for him. So I brought him home. He recovered beautifully from surgery. Then, you know, maybe two days later, he was out chasing squirrels again. You know, dogs and cats recover so well. And, um, and so I said, uh-oh, he's got now, he's got cancer that spread to his liver. I'm gonna bring him to the, to the oncologist. I, I work with a lot here in South Florida, Dr. Correa. And, um, and so I, I went to her and, and so she looked at his blood work and she was talking to me like a regular person because even though I'm a veterinarian, when it's your own baby, you kind of go a little bit crazy and you, and you don't know what's going on. So she talked to me and she says, you know, this is really bad cancer. And for Neo, he either had seven weeks without chemo or he had seven months if I did chemo. So, so we were not given a, a long enough uh, time with him. But, so I had to make the big decision on whether or not I wanted to do chemo. And, and by the way, either option is okay. Uh, for me and my family, we knew that Neo was, he was doing well. Like I said, he had no other problems. He recovered from surgery like a champ, out chasing squirrels. And so if I could get an extra six months with him, I was gonna go for it. So we actually did chemotherapy. And, um, and he did really well on chemo. He did not have, you know, maybe a few inappetent days, but, but nothing, nothing like so many people are scared of with chemotherapy. And so, um, you know, I have a wonderful uh, group of oncologist friends, veterinary oncologists like Dr. Dr. Sue Ettinger, and, and they tell me that the side effects of chemo are actually much lower than, than we all are worried about. And so he did, he did really well. And, I, and he died seven months to the week that I saw Dr. Correa. So she was spot on with his, with his possible lifespan. And so, um, so that was Neo, that was my one guy. So we, so we did have, the, have to deal with the adrenal tumor. And then my other dog, Sarissa, my white, uh, I have, how old was he? He was just turning 10. So this disease usually happens around middle, middle to late age uh, dogs. Um, my other girl, Sarissa, my, my, my Samoyed, who's in pictures all over the place with me, she, um, she also had Cushing. So one day she peed in the house. Now, she peed in the house already because she had diabetes. And I just thought it was her diabetes not being regulated well because if any of you are dealing with diabetes in your pets, you know that it's not an easy disease to, to regulate. So I thought, oh, maybe I have to adjust her insulin a little bit. What's going on? But I did some tests and it turns out that she had a, uh, Cushing's. Her Cushing's was the pituitary gland. So her pituitary gland was just not working well. And so it was sending some mis mixed messages to her adrenal glands to keep producing the steroids. Um, so for her, uh, we just had to put her on medications. And so it, we had some medications that were given to help to help calm that pituitary gland and, 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 not, and not produce so much steroids out of, out of her adrenal gland. Um, 
She sadly, though, she did not make it much longer after diagnosis. It was maybe within six months, but she was almost 13 when she passed. Um, and she had a couple other things going on with her. But, uh, but we gave her some good, some good last few months. Now, um, some signs to look for, like how do you know if your dog may have Cushing's? Well, like I said with Sarissa, there's some kind, sometimes some mixed signs, right? And so drinking a lot and peeing a lot, those are signs for many diseases, many endocrine diseases like diabetes. So if you are watching your pet drink a lot more and, uh, and or pee a lot more, definitely go to your veterinarian to get some initial blood work done. Now it's hard when you're in a multi-pet um, home, right? So you probably have two or three dogs and they're all running for the, for the water bowl at the same time, uh, which is usually in my house as well. But if you're, if you're observant and you watch that your pet is, is drinking more and peeing more, that's like the number one sign. Some other subtle signs is a pot belly. And so um, the, the dogs that have this, just a, a typical pot belly in a dog, and it's hard to explain, but um, so what happens to the, the muscles in, in the abdomen just don't hold, them, hold themselves well as they used to. I could say that for myself too, but um, anyway, so we'll see this pot belly, thin skin, there's this very tissue paper looking skin that we'll see, um, panting more because anytime a dog is on, is on steroids or their body is producing too much steroids, we're gonna see a lot of panting, some muscle wasting, and even some hyperpigmentation, which is just, like a lot of freckles, if you will, um, on your pet. So if you see any of these signs, I would absolutely recommend going to your veterinarian. They are going to wanna to do a couple of different blood tests. Um, so they're not just the typical ones that we, that we do with CBC and chemistry. Chemistry is definitely most uh, very important that we do that, but then there's gonna be some additional ones, some curves and things like that. And so um, you're gonna be you know, hearing some new words and that's okay. Uh, they might wanna then do an ultrasound to see if it is um, an adrenal tumor is it you know is it big and nasty or is it is it um, is it unilateral or bilateral so what that means is it is it one adrenal gland or both adrenal glands and if you can imagine the one adrenal gland that's probably that's probably adrenal related because it's one adrenal gland has the tumor if they're both really big it's usually usually pituitary because it's they're both just working extra hard and, and getting bigger and bigger um, so so they're going to want to probably do an ultrasound and maybe even some x-rays to see if um, if it is cancer, if it's spread to a, spread to their lungs, some complications is that they will get um, they could get diabetes, probably about 80% I think get diabetes, so a high number. That's why we want to do some other blood work to make sure um, uh, that we manage that as well. Infections they can get infections, the cancer spreading if it is malignant cancer like it was in my boy Neo, um, and then also some side effects like a, a pulmonary thromboembolism. And, that's, and that is probably the way that Neo died. Um, sadly, I was, I was planning to say goodbye to him right, after, you know, right soon after Thanksgiving. Um, we wanted to make it to the holidays like many of us do. And the day after Thanksgiving, I went to go help a family say goodbye to their kitty cat. And it was in the middle of the day. And I came home and Neo was, was unfortunately had passed without me. And I will always regret not being with him to hold his paw and thank him for, you know, taking care of us and protecting us from from all the, you know, evils in our neighborhood, which really weren't that many. Um, but unfortunately, I, I believe the way he passed was from a pulmonary thromboembolism, and and that um, may not be very comfortable. And so I, I I wish I was strong, as strong as some of our our clients are at Lapo Love, to say goodbye sooner, because a, a week too soon is better than a day too late. And, uh, and my, my oncologist was, was really amazing through this whole process. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad though that I still did the surgery. I'm so glad I did the, the chemotherapy because in the end it was his cancer. And, uh, and I know that I, I did the best I can, or I could. If you can't do surgery, um, that's, that's okay. We would still recommend giving some medications. So just like we would for the pituitary dependent Cushing's, for the adrenal dependent Cushing's, we could still use some medications to help manage the symptoms and the, um, and the complications that come along with it. Um, as far as support in the house, a lot of it has to do with that excessive drinking and peeing. So everything I ever talk about with urination and, and things in your house to, to protect your house from, from a, a dog that's peeing a lot, there's a wonderful product called Ruggable, and it is a waterproof type of area rug that you can get that comes in all different sizes and, and, uh, and designs, and it's got like a rubber backing, and so that way you don't damage your, your floor. Um, and so things that just manage, again, 
excess urination is, is important. As far as just emotional support, there's a wonderful Facebook group for dogs with Cushing's. And I'm actually a member of that group. And um, so that way you can, you can understand that you're not alone with this disease and that there are others that um, also have pets that, that are struggling with this. And, and we can learn from each other and learn about different tips to manage them in the home and just uh, and support each other when, um, when we are dealing with this disease. So I hope this was helpful. I, uh, like I said, it was one of those diseases I struggled with understanding in vet school. And, um, and so once I started to have to deal with it with my own pet, I started to understand the importance of it. And you know, anytime we could, we could talk about avocados, you know, things are good. <laughs> so think of those adrenal glands when you look at avocados in, the, in this food store <laughs> and think of me. I hope this was uh, helpful. If you have any questions, put them below and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.